ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you are with Small Musa TV. Let's do one thing at a time. You can enjoy here mad crypto travel and songs, of course. Bye bye. Welcome. Okay, welcome back to Small Musa TV. Today we shall have a new discussion and and we will be looking into the uh, hypothesis testing. No? So we will be doing a testing of hypothesis. Okay. Hopefully you are all fine. You know, testing of hypothesis or hypothesis testing. Uh, many decisions in business and education and even in personal circumstances are based on information that is collected from the real world. For instance, you are deciding to put up a business or selling a car. Your first course before spending money on this business is to know which car sells the most of these days. Diba? Before you open a business of selling Toyota, Mitsubishi, Hyundai, Honda, or Suzuki, so you have to gather first information. Now, which of, among these get the most uh, number of sales? How many existing distributors of these cars out there in Sambonga City? Do you want to compete? Uh, to answer these questions, you need to gather data. Uh, now, what type of data you are going to collect and where you get them? You simply need to do a survey, of course. No? So, this does not need to cover the whole population because that's impossible for us to cover the whole population. It's only the Philippine Statistical Authority who are doing the census survey, not any researcher. So, where that part of the population is called the sample or the end. Now, you have also to take note that there are types of data that you have to collect. We have the nominal, the ordinal, the interval, and ratio data, just to recall. But in this subject, testing the hypothesis or hypothesis testing. So you have now the following. No? Uh, first, you have an issue to settle. You have a statement of your problem. Now, that answers to your statement of the problem is what we call the hypothesis. Hypothesis is the conjecture or statement that explains the phenomena. Now, there are two types of hypothesis. Usually, we design in statistical testing. Okay? For a sample hypothesis test, we have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Alright? Now, null hypothesis, uh, often this is denoted by HO, is a statement of which is being investigated. It is usually written in a negative form such as uh, characteristics X has no significant effect. Yung mga ganon. Or we say there is no significant difference between the two variables under study. Or we say X has no significant relation with Y. So the test of significant is designed to assess the strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis. So later, you have to find your probability values. Okay. So that's null hypothesis. Now, we say we have also to formulate our alternative hypothesis. Uh, alternative hypothesis that is contrary to the null hypothesis. Uh, it is the null hypothesis without the word no. So in other words, you simply copy your alternative, you, you simply copy your null hypothesis and remove the words no. That's alternative hypothesis. Meaning it's the positive statement of the null. Okay? Then, okay. The following are some of the statistics to be used when you do hypothesis testing, uh, there are usually two groups of uh, statistical tools that you may use, the comparative analysis and your correlational analysis. 
But this video is more on about correlational analysis. But for initial talks, a comparative analysis, that is when you attempt to compare two or more groups in terms of the value of their mean. Okay? So we have Z-test, T-test, analysis of variance, and chi-square. So these are the most common uh, statistical tools you, you may use when you want to do a comparative analysis. As I said, uh, this video is all mostly will discuss on correlational analysis. So the following are the most common, no? commonly used correlational analysis. We have the Pearson product moment correlation, or the Pearson's R, the linear regression, the Spearman row, and for Spearman rank. Then we have also the multiple regression. Okay. Now, uh, on our screen now, class, are the steps no, when we do uh, statistical hypothesis testing, no, when we do hypothesis testing. So there are six steps in hypothesis testing. Okay, it's clear. The first one is you have to formulate your null, you, you have to formulate your hypothesis. It could be your null or it could be your alternative hypothesis. Next is you determine the level of significance or your alpha value. Uh, if for those who are new to statistics, we say the level of significance, this is the probability that you allow to commit a mistake of... Uh, Rejecting your null hypothesis when in fact it is true. So we say alpha to be 0 0.05 or that is 5%. However, in for experimental study or science study, they usually set the alpha at 0 0.01. Now, of course, uh, it, it's really required for safety. Now, step number three is you determine the test statistics to be used. Since this video is all about correlational, so the test statistics to be used are any of the following. Pearson R, Spearman Tro. Uh, we have also the special case of uh, Pearson R, which is the point by serial correlation. Then you may also use multiple regression. Uh, in case your data is categorical, chi-square test of association has to be used, right? Now, step number four is you do the computation to find the computed value. So when we say you do the computation, in here you have to use the you have to use your data, you have to use your data and do the arithmetic operations. By the way, don't be intimidated by the formula. They are just formula. At the end of the day, what you do are simple. Multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Believe me on that. Okay? So, step number five is you find the critical statistical value or the tabular value or no? in acronym, we say CSB or TV. Where, where DF is N minus 2. Then, step number six, you have your CV or your computed value. You have your critical statistical value or tabular value. So you do step number six, which is you compare your CV and your CSB TV. Okay. So we have the following as decision points. 6.1. Yeah, you are correct. CV means the critical or the, I mean, the computed value is greater than the critical statistical value or tabular value. So we reject HO. Yes, if CV is less than CSB or TV, uh, you say, fail to reject HO. Or the other way of saying it, we accept HO. Okay? I hope you follow class. Okay. So the next is, let's proceed to linear correlation. Correlational analysis is simply a process of investigating a relationship between variables, usually two variables. Yeah? Because if 
you are to correlate more than variables, so you have to use multivariate uh, regressional analysis. But we will not go into that. We are concentrating on two variables, one an independent, the other one is a dependent variable. So correlational analysis also are measures of association or strength of the relationship between variable such as x and the y. Okay. Now, if you want to find the relationship between two quantitative variables without being able to infer casual relationship, take note of that. Yeah? So when we say you do correlational analysis, definitely you don't go into causal relationship. No? So you cannot establish what is the cause of the independent the dependent variable what makes the independent dependent variable this perform that could not be established by correlational analysis only correlational analysis can only tell us how one variable is uh, related to another variable so that's correlation no it's a technique used to determine the degree of one variable is related to another variable. Okay, so let's have the first one, Pearson's correlation. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, this is we call we the full name really is Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. Okay, uh, so it measures the nature and strength between two variables of quantitative data. So this is the formula class. As I said, don't be intimidated by the formula. No? This is simply summations, addition, no? and multiplication. Okay? So n is the number of pairs of scores. Your summation xy is simply the product of xy, add them all. Yeah? Sum of the products of paired scores. The summation of x is simply the sum of all x. The summation of y is simply the sum of y scores. Summation x squared is simply the sum of squared x score. No? So meaning the x, square it, you take the sum, that's your summation x squared. Your summation y squared is simply the squared of the y and take their sum. Alright. Now, uh, sometimes we also test our correlation as to whether there is significant relationship. Now, the common practice is we use this formula. TR is equal to R times the square root of the quotient of N minus 2 divided by 1 minus R square. So this is a test for correlation. Uh, usually, our degree of freedom is N minus 2 because uh, there are two, two groups. No? Alright. Now, by the way, class, these are the sample critical values of correlation. No, you can find this in some of the statistical books. Get a copy of them so that you will be guided uh, because this is where we get our uh, critical statistical value. Uh, so this is where we get our critical statistical value or sometimes we call it the tabular value. So we have critical values of correlation, coefficient R, and critical values of the t-distribution. Okay? Now, uh, let us use this uh, relationship or table provided by Bandari on October 10, 2020. So these are the correlation strength and correlation type. As we know, uh, correlation can be established from negative 1 to 0, 0 to positive 1. Okay? So, this is our uh, interpretation. As I said, this is of Bandari 2022. It's, it's recent. So, when you say point, negative 0.7 to negative 0.1, it's very strong. No? The correlation is very strong. However, it's negative. Negative 0.5 to negative 0.7, that is strong, and it's negative. Negative 0.3 to negative 0.5, so the relationship is moderate, 
However, it's negative. 0 to negative 3, it's weak. So, it's negative. Okay? 0, uh, when you got 0, of course, you say there is no relationship. So, the correlation type is 0. Uh, greater than 0 to negative 0.3, it's a weak correlation. No? Or we call it the positive correlation. Negative 0.3 to negative 0.5, that's moderate, positive. Negative uh, 0.5 to 0.7, strong. 0.7 to, point, to 1.0, very strong. Uh, so if you got an R which is, let's say, 0.6, so R 0.6, it's belong to this category. Therefore, there is a moderate and positive relationship. Now, class, uh, I want you to look into scatter diagram. Scatter diagram is our graphical tools that can help us determine what type of relationship exists in our given set of data. So usually, scatter diagram is in rectangular coordinate. You have the x and the y axis. Uh, there must be quantitative variables. One variable is called the independent, usually the x. And the second variable is called the dependent, usually the y. Now, take note, these are points. These are points. They are not joined. Uh, we don't connect dots. Right? Now, and there is no frequency table for this purpose. Okay? A scatter plots is simply a pattern of data which is indicative of the type of relationship between your two variables. And there are three possible relationships, positive, negative, and no relationship at all. Okay? So this is how a positive relationship, when you, when you come up with your scatter diagram, if the points are clustering into a straight line between the x and y axis, and it's, it's pointing toward upward, so there is a strong positive relationship. Okay? Well, when you have a uh, scatter diagram that looks like this, the points are clustering to a line which is, can be drawn in this way. So you have a strong negative relationship. Okay? Well, when you come up with a scatter diagram and the points are dispersed and very, some are attached to the line, but many are far from. So there are many outliers, shall I say. So in this case, you say no relationship. Okay? So this is what we mean by positive relationship. So two variables are possibly positively correlated if the two variables both increases, otherwise both decreases. So if one value increases, so with the other. If one variable decreases, so with the other. Okay? So, negative relationship, if one value decreases, its, alter, its opposite value, its other value it increases. No? So, there is inverse relationship in that case. Uh, this one is when we say there's no relationship. Okay? So, again, uh, let me remind you, these are the steps in hypothesis testing. Let's adapt this when we do uh, statistical analysis or hypothesis testing. Okay, let's have an example. The first example do we have here. Okay. So if we are to calculate and analyze the correlation coefficient between the number of study hours and the number of the exam scores of different students, okay, and you decide that you are to test at 0 0.05 level of significance. So you have number of students, there are 10. Uh, now, take note, uh, your data must be one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning this four here is the score of student one. Yeah, this is the measurement of student one in terms of number of study hours. This one is the score of the student one in terms of the exam score. So it must be one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay? So you are to determine... Now, what's the problem? The problem is... Uh, you want to establish whether there is there is significant relationship between uh, significant relationship between the number of study hours 
and examination scores of different students. Okay, so that's your problem. And if that is the statement of the problem, this is your conjecture or your hypothesis. So you have the HO and the HA. Okay? So as you notice, class, the only difference between HO and HA is the word no. See? Clear na, no? Okay. Next, we now come up with a table for our data. So we simply copy the, the information earlier, 1 to 10. So we have the number of study hours for student 1, 4. The exam score is 85. You, you, we copy this from the previous data. Then, as I said, uh, it's easy. All you have to do is take the sum. So you have the sum. You can use calculator to find the sum. Then, also your y. Take the sum. So, 797. Okay. I hope you are following me. Next, uh, you have there. No? So, XY. Okay. So, this XY, you meaning X times Y, no? X times the Y. Okay. So, that's your XY. You follow? Oh, very good. Okay. So, meaning to say, you multiply 4 times 85. That gives you 340. Okay. So, 6 times 80 will give you 480. Okay. You do the same to all of the data and you take the sum. You add all of this. You add. So, the result is 3,925. So, the next step class is, you now take the square of x. No, that is x. Take the square of it. Meaning, 4 times 4. Huh? Here, 4 times 4 is 16. A, 6 times 6 is 36. 8 times 8, 64. Or, we say 4 square. 4 square is 16. 2 square, 4. Alright? So, complete such. Then, you have, the take again the sum of this. So, you have 263 as your summation x square. So, this is summation x square. You follow? Okay, very good class. So, the next is, we take the square of y. Yeah? The square of y. So, this is y. This is y square. So in other words, you multiply 85 to itself, 85. So you get 7,225. 80 times 80, you, you get 6,400. 92 times 92, 8,464. Right? Then after that, add all these values to get the summation of y square. Alright? Okay. Now, since we have all the summation there, all we have to do now is to plug it to our formula. Huh? So we can plug it to our formula. There. As I said, the formula is very simple. It's simply uh, addition and multiplication and subtraction. So given those data earlier, no? we have the data earlier. Okay. Yung 47, 10, 7, 000, 7, 9, 797, 3,925. Okay. So, copy those uh, and plug them appropriately in your formula. So, your n is 10. Your summation xy is 3,925 minus. Uh, your, the product of the summation of x is 47. The summation of y is 797. Alright. So, we simply plug in those values into our formula. Simplify it arithmetically, so you get R is equal to 0.80. Okay? You follow? R is equal to 0.80. Now, if you have your R, then you find that is the computed value. Huh? That is the computed value. So the next thing to do is find. You have to identify what is the tabular value. Huh? What is the tabular value? Okay. Now, to do to find the tabular value, all you have to do is 
you have to use the yan, you have to use the ready-made table. Ah, this is official. Now, at alpha 0.05 so, there, there is the intersection. Okay? The intersection is 0.632. Okay? So, that is your critical value for R. Alright. No? That will be your critical value for R. You follow? So, that's why we have 0.80. That the TV is 0.632. Now, remember our step number 6, 0.1. If TB is smaller than CB, so we reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Did you follow? Very good. Now, sometimes we also solve for the uh, test for correlation. Uh, so we want to establish whether uh, the, the correlation is significant or not. And we use T-test. No? But this is the formula for T-test that we are using in correlational analysis. Okay, so R times the square root of N minus 2, 1 minus R square. Okay, so just substitute your R as computed earlier is 0.80. So 10 minus 2, that is N is 10, uh, yes 10, so minus 2, 2 table, 1 minus 0.8 square. So take note of 0.8 square. Then, you do the operation. The result is 0 0.3, 0 0.77. This is the CB using T-test for correlation analysis. Therefore, we dis make this decision. Okay? Any questions so far? None? Let's proceed further. So, this is what I'm trying to drive at class. No? So, to determine, the next step is determine your critical values or tabular values. Ayan. Ha? You have there, uh, degree of freedom 8 and you have an alpha level, so 2.30. Degree of freedom 8, then you have alpha level 0.632. Okay. Any question? Very good. If there is none. Okay. We can proceed. <coughs> so, since we have computed the R, we now make, uh, we solve for the df, n minus 2, tr, r times the square root of n minus 2, 1 minus r. Okay. Now, the conclusion that we can generate, we will say that the calculated correlation coefficient is positive. There, therefore, it implies direct relationship between the number of study hours of the students and their scores. Also, the magnitude of the correlation coefficient is 0.80, which means the result of the of the stud R implies a very high correlation. Okay? So, I hope you learned class in today's lesson and keep on reviewing our, our video. And thank you for joining. Bye-bye! See you next meeting!